Yeah, talk about uh, talk about that because to, to for those that are watching, uh, you're right now in the middle of one of the coldest winters in Europe. Correct. Talk about uh, conditions, if you would. Well, there was snow on the ground. I'd say eight or ten inches. It was just terribly cold. And uh, under the circumstances, you know, you're pumped up with adrenaline and fear and wondering what's going to happen next. But, but the only, I had no sweater, no gloves, no uh, scarf, no wool cap. All I had was a field jacket. I did have one extra pair of socks, which I put next to my skin. And I was in that foxhole for eight days. We were surrounded on three sides by the enemy and, and, and entirely under uh, rocket fire and artillery uh, 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 during daylight hours since they couldn't see anything from their positions at night. Well, and, and we weren't going anywhere. <laughs> there, we couldn't have advanced one foot and they knew that. Now, their position was to anchor the north end of the Battle of the Bulge to protect the main thrust, which went just a little bit south of us, which was 106th Division, which was almost annihilated. Right. Uh -huh. One whole regiment surrendered. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 3,000 men. And it was pitiful. Anyway, uh, I think I've kind of lost my story there, but. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I, about every hour or two, I would take, I would change socks, and massage my feet, and, and but nevertheless, I still developed severe uh, frostbitten feet. Oh, great. And I couldn't walk. I couldn't even get out of the foxhole. I, they had to lift me up, took me to the co command post, put me in a hospital, and I don't remember check. The drive, I don't remember checking in, I don't remember being examined by a doctor. I woke up on a cot in the hospital. And I said, Jesus, you know, we were practically surrounded on all sides. And there was a nurse there and she came over when I came awake and I said, where am I? And thank God she replied in English. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you're in uh, Luxembourg. And this is a convalescent hospital. And I looked down and they'd taken off my shoes and socks. And I was on a cot. And the way they cure this, if you don't have trench foot, which I didn't, but due to the fact that I was continually massaging, why well, they just let it thaw out. And this, uh, so it was, did I tell you, it was a monastery, a, a former monastery, probably 500 years old, and cold as a devil. I, I didn't even have a blanket, but, but I thought, well, you know, this is, this is, nobody's shooting at me. <laughs> so this is probably pretty good. So after about three days, the, I had some circulation that I, I could put my shoes on. And then they said, we're going to see if you can walk. So I went out and walked around in the snow for a while. And, and uh, then I was uh, uh, stepped back to my unit. But I hadn't been back there more than a, a week, and, and a runner from the company commander that brought me a commendation from the a general of the, our division. And he said that he had been informed by the commanding officer of the hospital what a wonderful soldier I was. And he, there, you've got a copy of that. Any, anyway, I, so I showed that to my lawyer, and he said, well, what do you do? I said, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember anything out of the ordinary. And uh, so anyway,